Okay. So let me go over this game. Um, if you've played, see, I think you both have played Seven Wonders, right? Yeah. Okay. And you probably have played, I, I know David's played Century Golem Edition. So it's kind of similar to both of them. Um, so the game is, a, uh, if you look at your player board, maybe zoom in on mine so you can see my, my mouse. You're going to have these different resources. So, uh, I mean, you can, they're different names like charms, herbs, blood magic, potions, and alchemy, but. Really, they're just, you know, purple, green, red, blue, and gold resources. At the end of the yeah. game, um, they turn to points. So the symbol next to this is like three charms equal one point. The gems are points in this case. Okay. So basically, all these, these two resources and the potions are three potions for one point at the end of the game. Every blood magic you have is negative one point, And oh. every, el every gold or alchemy that you have is one point. Um, one other thing is say you have like two charms and one herbs that's zero points because you have to have them in groups of three of that type got it um okay so the game's gonna work like this so we're gonna uh let me flip over some cards here and i'll show you the what the cards look like so whoops man this thing is like really flippy today okay so in the top left here is the cost um so in okay. this case on this card it is two blood magic or two of any type in this case it's one herb or three of any type to put into play and then the effect is at the bottom in this case if you look at the herb card it'll say uh it actually has a blood moon which means anytime you cast which we'll go over casting in a second it activates regardless um and sorry, just to verify, so you said that that costs an herb, or that symbol means it's an herb card. Uh, so it's a top green. Left. The top left is a green herb card. The thing below it is what it costs to put into play. Cost. Okay. And then the effect is here. And one more note is that this is a got a blood moon. So, right. If yeah, you, uh, yeah, basically it'll always cast, or you'll basically always you'll get it every time you you activate. I'm trying to find a couple more cards here. Just see. Um, is that it costs nothing? This costs nothing to put into play. And let's see here. Okay. And this is a special... Uh, that I was looking for one of these. So there's two types of special cards. One is artifacts. When you put those into play, this is actually free to put into play. Um, you just put it over here, and then you score this at the end of the game. So in this case, okay. it, you gain five victory points if you have the most cards under alchemy. And, and I'll go over that. Um, so now that we understand what it costs to put a card into play, let's talk about how the game is going to work. So you're going to get a hand of cards uh, to start with, and you're going to draft one of those cards. And you can do one of two things uh, every round. You can either discard the card by flipping it down and putting it face down over here, which means that you're going to cast this turn. I'll go over casting. The other thing you can do is you can put the card into play. So in this case, I would pay my one herb, and I'd put this card into play above here on the charms section. Okay. Now, whenever you cast charms, you cast this gain one charm, and then you cast this card above it. And casting is that a one-time thing? If it's not one of those persistence? Um, no, no, no. You'll uh, okay. I'll, I'll go over the casting here in a second. But basically, when okay. you discard a card, you're going to cast. Now, the way that casting right. works is we're going to put um, we're going to put tokens into play <clears throat> for the rounds. So, for example, if we're on round three and you decide to cast, you're going to cast herbs and alchemy so you're going to do all the cards in herbs and all the cards in alchemy oh, okay. from left to right so so for example if i had this thing into play and i don't have an alchemy card but let's, let's just say i had this into play the way it would work is i would start here and i would gain one herb and then i'd gain another herb and then i would be able to spend one resource to gain one alchemy so i'd change a i'd probably change a blood magic into alchemy right so we we do the so we do the drafting so we have like five cards or whatever we pick one you pick one and then and then at that time that we pick it we either play it or discard it exactly and, and then, then and then we, you pass the cards and you're gonna do that again and you're gonna do that for three rounds with uh, one two three four five six turns each now there is one okay. special thing this last round is different than the rest of the round so if you decide to cast in this round. Um, you're gonna. Is that the first round or the last round? The last round starts at starts at six, goes to one. Okay. Um, so the last round of each of these, uh, the last turn of each of these rounds, 
you're going to cast everything, but you're only going to cast the most recent card in each one that was played instead of the whole the whole set. So, for example, in this case, I would cast gain one charm, gain one uh, uh, herb, gain one blood, gain one potion, and then I could transfer one to alchemy. Or if I had this in play, I would, instead of getting the gain one potion, I would get the gain two potions, but I wouldn't get both in that last round. So here's the thing I'm still confused on. So let, let's say that I, I, I draft cards, I put them in play, and then at some point I discard a card and I cast my stuff. Yep. What happens to the cards in play after we cast? They stay in play. Unless they, they stay, stay in play. There's some cards that, that have effects on them that they do get removed. I think this one might be one okay. of them. But unless okay. they, basically, unless they say, uh, no, this, is, this isn't it. But there's some cards, there, there are a few cards where they will eventually get removed from play. But if they don't say it, they just stay into play. Okay, so then basically they can be activated again. Exactly. Okay, and then what was special about this one with the red thing? Oh, card card activates at least once every time you cast. Oh, yep. so even if it's not even if it's yeah. not active. Yeah, so so for example, if say you say we're on round two and we casted blood magic and potions, I would still get this benefit. Got it. Um and then let me think here. Uh at the end of three, you know, three uh rounds of turns, the person with the uh most points wins. And this is your point counter during the game. Sometimes you have victory points during the game, but most of them happen at the end. So you just add and subtract points if you, if you have them there. So, and so each, each round, two of these things are activated, and is it random? It's random, it... yeah. So what'll happen is we'll put these out. I, I just didn't fill it up because I didn't want to reset it, but basically we'll fill this oh, thing it's up. known in advance. Yeah, it's known in advance. So you can plan ahead. And, and it could be the same one twice. Exactly. And it's very important to, to, to pay attention to these double rounds because that's super effective, right? Optimizing that can be a, can be a big deal. And um, it's, it's really, it, it works kind of like Seven Wonders um, in that you want to build up your engine and then you want to like crunch that engine to points, uh, probably your second and third rounds more so. And the cards do get more powerful later. So, you know, there is a balance, right? On when you put a card into play, Versus when you discard it to run your engine. And uh, you also, you know, sometimes why discard cards that so other people don't get them, but there are cards that let you take cards out of people's discard piles. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, uh, let me see if there's a spell card in here. So there's some spell cards which are like one time effects. And you can't, uh, like, use a spell card to get another spell card. Uh, it's somewhere in here. Anyway, there's spell. Tr trust me, there's spell cards when you play them. It'll it'll make sense. Okay. Um, I think it's pretty. I mean, it's not a very difficult game to to learn how to play, but I think it fixes the issues. You know, the one problem we had in uh, Golem Edition was the the fact the market would like fill up. I think it really right, it, gets it, stale. Yeah, yeah. It, it fixes that because you're always using cards and you're getting rid of them, and you're also like. You know, I don't think there's any really bad cards, so you can always find something to do on your turn, right? Okay, and we start with one of each resource. You start with one of each resource, and finding a good way to use those and turn them into uh, cards is, is really important early in the game. What's the yellow things? Cube? Those are five resources. Oh, okay. Yeah, it says, actually, if you after you take one out, if you hover oh, over yeah. it, it says five resources. So it's just, um, usually you don't use them, but towards the end of the game, you might get a lot of uh, gold here. So you might want to use the the five cubes for that. Okay, so let's see here. 